friends, welcome back to Fig and Firm at Home. I am so glad you're here for this Know Before You Go, and this one is a good one. Have you heard the term clutter core? We're talking all about it today, how it is different than cottage core, how it is different than maximalist decorating, and how I'm not quite buying it. <laughs> Why you need to know before you go on this trend that apparently has been around for a while and I've been snoozing on. So sit back and relax. Enjoy today's show. How many times have you found yourself at your favorite home decor store, browsing aimlessly for an item to spruce up your space, just to bring it home and then not quite like it, or find that your effort didn't pay off the way that you imagined? That rug you bought? Too big, too small, or too brown? And the curtains? We don't need to go there. Or maybe we do in this new Tuesday quick tip series, Know Before You Go, brought to you by all the mistakes I've made before (laughs) and thankfully have learned from. Hey, I'm Danny, a former first grade teacher turned home decorator. Going from a dual income to a single income so I could stay home with my babies meant budget, like ramen eating Goodwill shopping budget. And I've learned a few things along the way and definitely made a few mistakes. But I am so excited that you're here learning how you can know before you go. So put down your credit card, grab a notebook and a pen, because you're definitely going to want to take notes. Friends, are you curious to know what clutter core is and how you can possibly be decorating, how a decorating style can have the word clutter in it? (laughs) Me too. So I took a deep dive to figure it all out and I'm sharing it with you. And the jury is still out whether or not I like it. So stick around to the end. (laughs) I will have my analysis on whether I like it or not, but how it really honestly doesn't matter. And you'll hear that too. So what is Cluttercore? According to Southern Living Magazine, Cluttercore is a maximal approach to decorating where more is more. It's not about making a mess or filling a room with piles of stuff. That would make the folks on Hoarders jump into action, but about displaying and arranging what you have and what you love. If that was it, I totally can get behind that. Because Fig and Farm at Home, we are all about decorating your home with your style, surrounding yourself with things that tell your story. And if you think about it, unless you have been given pieces of hand-me-down furniture or things that you feel obligated to have on display, you have literally hand-picked every single item in your home, every single item. And I am not necessarily about having the special dishes so that you can have them on the special occasion. I'm very much in alignment with this idea that if you like it, use it. Because hidden away in a box is not necessarily meaningful. Bringing it out on that special occasion, yes, it can make that event more special, but having it out and using it and appreciating it for what it is and the story it tells and how it serves you is way better in my opinion. So if that's all clutter core was, I am absolutely 100% on board. But when I took a deep dive look into what clutter core is and I read articles and I saw pictures from reputable design sources like Architectural Digest and other magazines, I wasn't necessarily sure. In fact, I was scratching my head just a little bit about some of the pictures that popped up and how that would be considered a decorating style that would not beckon the hoarder show. In fact, one image popped up and I thought immediately, oh boy, okay, deep breath, deep breath. This is really something. (laughs) So let's peel back the onion just a little bit and talk about what it is and how it relates to some of the other decorating trends that have had their moment or still do. Early on in the podcast, I talked to you about the decorating style called cottagecore. And cottagecore was birthed during the pandemic when we were staying at home a little bit more. And it conjured up this image of kind of country lane living. I picture walking down this dirt road into this really sweet, not brand new, not overly large home that looks like it could probably have a stand to have a new coat of paint on the outside, but when you walk in, you are just enveloped in this nice, sweet, warm embrace. The windows are open, the breeze is flowing. There are things in there that are storied and layered, and you might smell the fresh fresh baked bread coming out of the oven and have waiting for you 
the butter that may have been churned by you, but definitely the strawberry preserves that were picked from your garden and made from scratch. You might walk into a room that has wallpaper surrounding and cozy velvet chairs, and it might just feel like a wonderful place to read a book. Cottage core was a very storied look, a very layered look. Things that were passed down through generations or picked up from flea markets, thrift stores, things that felt good. And if you want to listen to more, go back and listen to episode 15. So how does cottage core differ from clutter core? Here's what DetroitNews.com had to say about it. If clutter core is sunbeams peeking through fluffy clouds on a lazy afternoon, clutter core is sitting by a warm hearth after a quick walk in a fall rainstorm. Imagine the difference. Can you feel the difference? Can you feel the bright and airy of cottage core and the moody, broody, cool feeling of clutter core? Almost like a den, almost like a library, almost like you're invited into this space where a little bit more lighting would be good. A little bit more lighting. It feels cozy and warm, but it's very ambient lighting. It's not lit by the sunbeams. It's not lit by the natural light. The layers and the stories might be very similar from clutter core to cottage core. It still feels layered. It still feels storied. It still feels like there's a lot to look at, a lot to bring up imagery for you. But in clutter core, you're surrounding yourself with things that you love. You might have a chair in a cozy corner that is lit by ambient lighting, and that lamp might be sitting on top of a stack of books. You might also have a stack of books near your footstool, and the footstool might be something that you picked up on a long ago trip that you brought back and you just love. It is ratted and torn and a little bit tattered now, but you still love it. And now all of that is sitting right next to or on top of a layered Persian rug that, again, you got on one of your travels. It's not quite perfect, but it's something that you absolutely love. And the colors don't necessarily go with the footstool, but you don't care because it is, again, something that you love. Next to you is the console table, and that console table could be packed full of stacks of books and cloches that have displays of bees hive or interesting little statues, interesting little trinkets that you've picked up over the years. There might not be a spare space for you to put your coffee down because you've chosen to display the items on this console that you like looking at. So you would rather just hold your coffee in your hand and not necessarily have that space. You can move around your room, but It also feels like if a friend came over and a friend was a little averse to things, they might kind of need to shuffle some things aside to feel cozy and comfortable, but you don't mind. The artwork that is displayed on shelves, hanging in front of shelves, even put on the floor because there's no space on the walls anymore, it is all there for your liking. Every space that you look at is a way for you to have your senses ignited. This is the the imagery that I'm getting when I think of clutter core. It reminds me of what going into the nutty professor's office might feel like, where there are books upon books upon books and really interesting finds that are layered in the shelves that are maybe scientific experiments that he is proud of. And they are just layered on books in the shelf on display as a reminder of years gone by or that really neat discovery. The butterfly collections that are mounted just so and are hanging on the wall next to the grasshopper display next to the shelf that is housing all the books and the microscope. And not just maybe one microscope, but two or three. They're collections of things that are important. And when you move around to the desk, you see more stacks of books because the stacks of books are important. Those are the ones that are most important, the ones that are referred to and referenced most often. Those are holding up lamps and clocks. Those are holding up other important pieces of scientific artwork. (laughs) Collections that, that serve as a reminder of important discoveries. There you might find stacks of papers too, but if the nutty professor were to walk into that desk space, he would know exactly what was where and why it was put there. 
He would know where to find things. What could look like a cluttered mess to you would look like organized chaos to him. And that right there defines the difference. What to some looks like clutter, maybe an invitation for the hoarders to come in, looks like organized chaos. Looking at some pictures of clutter core, examples of clutter core, the thing that came to mind was a teenager's bedroom. Think about your bedroom when you were a teenager. Now, aside from the laundry that might be piling up on the floor, but think about the things that you put on the wall. Did you have a pegboard that you hung all kinds of random pictures, ticket stubs, necklaces, things that were just important? The, the collection of important little items that you didn't want to forget about that someday you might have, but they were all there in that one little place. And then you needed a place for your jewelry and your makeup. And those counters got a little bit cluttered or your vanity got just a little bit cluttered. You maybe had room for one more lipstick, but not a whole lot because every surface was, was full of perfume and not just one perfume because you had to have several and not just one makeup brush because you had to have a whole cup full of lots of makeup brushes. And then on the vanity mirror, you had layer upon layer of all of your necklaces. And then you had to hang your hat somewhere or your scrunchies or your banana clips. (laughs) Yes, I am that old where I am talking about banana clips. And those of you who are younger and you don't know what they are, two things. A, go Google it. And B, please do not bring them back because (laughs) they are not... They're not cute. They are just not. But then you had the fun colors that kind of mismatched. And it didn't really matter if your wall color was different than your rug color because you had the rug and you didn't just have the one rug, you had another. That image is clutter core. Surrounding yourself with all the things that you absolutely love, you can't quite possibly think you could live without. Are you following me? And have you stopped to look up pictures for yourself of what clutter core is? All right, let's compare one more. Clutter core versus maximalism. They are different, but they have a lot of similar qualities, kind of like cottage core to clutter core, those layered storied look, things that you love. But maximalism, in this sense, focuses on saturated colors, lots of textures, lots of accessories, layered patterning, bold gestures. And clutter core might look similar without the playfulness. It might look a little bit more subdued, a little bit more moody, but it has similar qualities. It has all of the layered pieces. It has the storied pieces. It has the accessories, but it has it in a more moody tone rather than saturated, bold, bright, playful colors where maximalism tends to land. So friends, where do you land? If you think about clutter in the same sense that I do, where clutter feels like a you have a visceral response to just the word, and there's no way you want to decorate with more is more is more is more, or are you on the the side of, I like what I like, and I definitely can get behind the storied sense, what is it for you? And here's my challenge. No matter where you land, if you land in cottage core, clutter core, maximalism, minimalism, if you are wanting to build your teeny tiny little house, whatever it is, know this. Your home is a canvas for storytelling. It is. Right now, whether you know it or not, your home is already saying something because each of the things that you have brought in are intentional pieces purchased or procured by you, except for maybe a couple of the things that you've inherited here and there, birthday gifts you might still have. But most all of the things are choices made by you. So how do you make those choices represent you and your style in a way that is meaningful? That is up to you. And whether you are clutter core, cottage core, minimalism, maximalism, whatever your style is, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you like it, you feel comfortable in your space, you feel confident inviting friends over if that is what you want to do, and you are not apologizing for anything in and around your space. It's for your enjoyment, and your home is an opportunity for you to share who you are with the people that you love. And if that means you want collections of butterflies on your wall or your bookcase, or if that means you want a full and structured gallery wall and lots of layered rugs in one area awesome. But friends, hear this. 
some of you may not feel confident in how your home looks, how it feels to you, let alone the people that you invite over. Some of you feel embarrassed for the way that you try and try again at decorating and you can't quite get it. Some of you spend countless hours at Target or Home Goods or Ikea or wherever your budget home decorating store is that you go to time and time again. You spend time there trying to make a decision and that decision just doesn't work. What if I told you that it is easier than you think? That change can be a phone call away. What if I told you that you can have a home that you love coming home to? A home that you're excited to pull into the driveway to, to throw open the door to and say, this is my home and I love it. When was the last time you stepped into a room and thought, this is my favorite room in the house and it happened to be the laundry room or the bathroom (laughs) or whatever room you just transformed? It doesn't have to be hard. All it takes is a brave step. So I'm inviting you. I have a few decorating SOS calls available for the month of February before we close out and start March. And you may still be wondering, what is a decorating SOS call anyway? What is that, Danny? Well, hey, we get to hang out over Zoom for one hour. That's a start. You get to have your drink in hand. I get to have my drink in hand. And we get to be design besties in a room having coffee together. Oh, that sounds amazing. But there's more than that. It's not just a coffee date, (laughs) though I would love that. I want to hear about what is keeping you stuck in the room that you're wanting to transform. I want to hear about what your design style is or you think it is so that I can help you unlock it to the fullest so that you can start identifying your style based on the design elements and not these global terms like traditional, Scandinavian, nautical, blah, 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 I don't know. Not those. I want to know what your style is. And if you don't know it, that's okay. We'll figure it out together. Because that really is the start for transforming your home. If you don't know what your style is, if you can't pinpoint, if I asked you, what are the five design elements that make up your design aesthetic? And if you can't answer that, we might need to chat. But after that, we have some fun. We talk about what goals you have for the room and the purpose you have for the room and how the things that you have currently are either meeting that purpose or falling flat. And then we make a plan. What does that plan include? Whatever it is that you want. What transformation do you have in mind? What hopes and goals and dreams do you have for that space? We put the first step into that action plan and a couple more. You walk away with an idea of what change is going to make the biggest impact in your home space and then what to focus on afterwards and afterwards and where to spend your budget, where to spend your money. Friends, we do all of that in one hour. I give you a roadmap for you to be able to take intentional action. I was just going to say take action, but we can all take action. We can take a teeny tiny step. We can take a sideways step. We can take a blind step. But a decorating SOS call is intentional action. If you are wanting a roadmap, that's what that is. If you're wanting a designer in your back pocket, that's what that is. If you're wanting someone to chitty chat about the ways that your room drives you bonkers, that's what that is. (laughs) We have fun, but we get work done. A lot happens in an hour. All right, friends, you can find out how to book your decorating SOS call in the links in the show notes. And I can't wait to share my coffee hour with you designing a space that you really love coming home to. Until next time, I'll see you soon. Hey, real quick before you go, if you learned something new or found value in today's podcast, would you head over to iTunes to Fig and Farm at Home and leave a review and subscribe to the show? That would be awesome. And if you'd like to connect with my community of mamas who are learning to be intentional storytellers within their own homes, join us at bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. There's always more room at the table. See you soon.